All right, peoples, this is Ross, the Fig Boss, and I want to just say hello to you guys. Welcome back to another fig season. Here, I'm going to take you guys on this YouTube channel on a journey to growing figs and uh, not just growing them, but actually enjoying the fruits. I'm here in the Philadelphia area, and uh, this is not a climate that you're supposed to be growing figs in. Yeah, they can do all right here, but uh, when you think about a fig conducive climate, really you're thinking about California or the Mediterranean, the desert. So here in these climates, and probably for the most of you watching right now, uh, I would say probably 70 to 80% of the country could really benefit from a couple of things that I'm going to mention right now in this video. So I want to welcome you guys to a new season. I hope everybody has a great season. I hope that if you guys are struggling along the way this season, that you will come back to my channel, um, see what I'm up to, maybe find out if you guys have an issue, what it is. We're going to go through the whole season from day one to the end, and we're going to talk about all the steps along the way to growing figs. So things like pinching, thinning, fertilizer, soil, pruning, storage, harvesting the fruits, tasting the fruits, all the different varieties and flavors. And um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys here. I know um, it's been a long winter, hasn't it guys? So welcome back everybody. Now what I want to talk about in this video is actually these tunnels behind me. This whole backyard, guys, has turned into plastic. I'm not kidding. I last year got into low tunnels. I realized that if I want to have more production and better production, uh, better tasting food, I should try to get a lot of my crops, not just my figs, but a lot of my crops actually to ripen at an earlier point of my season. Because at a certain point in my season, the temperatures and the rain starts to really go in the wrong direction. We get too much rain and it gets just too cold here. So the fig particularly is just one of them things that is highly subjected to the actual conditions it's ripening in currently. So if you have a fig that, let's say was growing in July and it was 90 degrees in July, well, that doesn't matter because if it's ripening in September and it's 60 degrees outside and it's raining, you're going to have a bad tasting fig or maybe not a bad tasting fig, but a fig that's nowhere near as good as it could be if it was ripening in July when it was 90 degrees outside. So I quickly learned that not just again for figs, but for my whole garden here, my whole summer garden, this is my Southern exposure as you can tell by how bright it is outside right now, um, it gets a lot of light. And in this area here, because it gets so much light, it also gets a lot of heat. So we plant a lot of our things that love that heat, that require that heat, especially to get going in the season. So, you know, certain things that you can think about, just, just let me give you guys this little background real quick. If you think about things like beans and tomatoes and eggplants and peppers and melons and you know cucumbers, all kinds of things that love that heat, what's some of the things that they always tell you, especially with corn, they tell you this with beans, don't plant your corn, don't plant your beans unless the soil is at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And you get a soil thermometer, you measure the soil temperature, you read it and you say, oh, you know what? It's too cold, I probably shouldn't plant just yet. And a lot of times we plant too early and it probably would have been more beneficial if we just waited a little bit. And that's kind of the problem is that we're always waiting for nature. We're always waiting for things to kind of warm up. And uh, if we could only just have a little bit more time earlier in the season, it pays off so much more down the road. So. That's what we're doing here in the garden is I've not only constructed these tunnels for the figs as I did last year, but I also have these tunnels constructed for my garden where I'm gonna be planting actually in this tunnel here, 
roughly 30 tomato plants. Uh, we have the melons over there, the cucumbers, and then behind it, you can't even see, is a tunnel for the peppers, the eggplants, and all that good stuff. So let me talk to you guys now about these figs because the same principles can be applied to the fig that they could be applied to all those other crops I mentioned. And normally when we think about low tunnels, when a farmer has low tunnels and constructs them and tries to extend the season in the spring, the fall, or the winter, we're usually thinking about crops that are lower growing that probably can deal with some colder temperatures as well. Things like lettuces and, and broccoli and kale and different things that, uh, you know, don't necessarily get too tall. Certainly not a perennial, right? Certainly not a fruit tree. And a lot of you guys out there, I don't know why it is, but there's a lot of hate on the fig. There's also a lot of love for the fig. And some people don't think the fig is all that special. And I want to tell you guys right now that the fig is pretty special. Getting real nice up and close and personal with you guys for this one. I don't think it's the, you know, the most amazing thing ever. I think there's definitely some value in other fruit trees, other species of plants. But the fig, you can't deny, is the one fruiting plant that you can grow here in this climate, in any temperate climate, that will actually be able to be cut down all the way to the base, all the way to nothing, and will still form fruit that following season and fruit within that season. So there's a lot to be said there, I think. And uh, just for that simple fact alone, that the fruit forms on the new growth, I think that's special, is it not? If you can apply that principle alone, to all kinds of other factors, all kinds of other techniques that you guys could use in your growing, then that's pretty special. I think that's pretty different. Because if you think about peaches, right? The peaches, the fruit forms on last year's growth, right? Mulberries, the fruit forms on last year's growth. Apples, it forms on spurs, on wood that's of a certain age. The cherry forms its flower buds on two or three year old wood. So to have a fruit, a fruit tree that actually can fruit on the new growth is pretty special and it's unique in that sense. So knowing that little piece of information, if you can make that work, you can grow it underneath a low tunnel because you can cut it back to almost nothing, set up the tunnel, extend the season, and get a much, much earlier harvest, which is then at a higher quality, at a higher quantity. And uh, well, that's gonna give you that experience that we're all looking for, right? Why do we buy an expensive bottle of wine for the experience, right? So that's what we're doing today is that we're gonna talk about these tunnels and the benefits. And I'm gonna go through the season. I'm gonna talk to you guys about as we go over the next couple months here because these tunnels aren't going to be up forever they're going to be only up until you know uh, probably mid-may maybe june 1st at the latest we're going to talk about the specs we're going to talk about the dimensions the cost the benefits well we're going to talk about the benefits right now um, some of the common common problems i've been having because i've only been doing this now for a year but i've certainly learned a lot in the last year and I uh, really got all the kinks, I think, worked out. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that over the next couple of months. But in this video, let's keep it simple to the benefits. And it's really, really simple here. So the first benefit I want you guys to know about, we've already touched on this a little bit, is actually when the figs themselves will ripen. And then of course, how that affects the fruit quality, right? So if I, as an example, give you guys a timeline, follow this timeline with me. In a normal season, my fig tree is gonna wake up sometime around May 1st, maybe even May 15th, if it's a bit cold in May. And the fig tree is not really gonna get its act together metabolically, right? Because us as humans, just like plants, we need a particular 
metabolic temperature. We need to be at a particular temperature to operate efficiently and effectively, right? So for us, it's like, what is it, 98.6? For plants, they're the same thing. They need to have those soil temperatures at a certain temperature to even really metabolically do much at all. For the fig, it's about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. At about 80, you're good. At 95, you go over 95 into 100, you're starting to actually get too warm. And uh, you might actually not see any growth at that point. If you're down to 60 or 70, you're looking okay. But 60, you really start to slow down. And at 50, you're almost doing nothing. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty slow. Uh, you got the metabolism of somebody who's like 600 pounds or something, right? So if we want to be that amazing athlete, right, um, we want to have that fast metabolism, we need to get to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And ideally, we do that the quickest we can. So if we can do that quickly by getting heat into the soil, which is exactly what these tunnels do. I mean, I mean, that's really the only thing they do. They actually block out some of the sun. So it's not like I'm getting more sunlight or something. I'm really only getting soil temperatures and, and also air temperatures, but really we're focused on the soil. So if I can get that to an earlier, you know, an earlier degree, I can't magically just say, all right, heat or earth, warm up, you know? So this is my best bet. This is a a greenhouse, right? We got the greenhouse effect. So if in a normal season, my fig tree wakes up, let's say, as I said, around May, May 15th, we don't really get going until about June 1st. The fruits will normally ripen here in the ground. If I'm lucky, if I'm really lucky, if I really know what I'm doing, here, I got the right varieties, I got the right genetics, I got the right techniques. I'm an expert at this. In my Philadelphia area climate, in the suburbs here, I'm going to see ripe fruit by August 15th. Now, if maybe I'm not so great at this, or maybe I have the wrong variety, or maybe we have a cold spring, I'm not going to see fruit until maybe September 1st, maybe even September 15th. Um, I think the average would probably be September 1st. So, Knowing my climate here, about September 15th, we really start to enter the fall. And you guys can go back to literally any of my videos. I'm not kidding. Just go back to any of them in the fall. Around September 1st onwards, you can go back for like three or four years now and look at some of the things I'm talking about. It's not fun. A lot of this fruits, they'll split. They'll not be of great quality. They won't taste as good. I'm just overall kind of sad and bummed out. So. I really want to give you guys a timeline now of when you're going to see fruits here in this climate if you set up these tunnels. So let's see here. The trees or the tunnels will get set up roughly around March 1st. And this year it took me a few days to get them set up. It was too cold and I've been very busy. But we only got them set up around March 5th, 6th or the 7th. And um, so we're a few days behind. That's no big deal. But let's say March 1st, they're set up. It's going to take them about roughly two to three weeks before they're going to wake up. So let's just say it takes them two weeks. That puts them at March 1st. Two weeks later, we're at March 15th, right? So stay with me here. After March 15th rolls around, um, it takes only about a month before they'll set fruit. So we'll visibly see fruits on the trees by, we should, by April 15th. Assuming we did everything right here, assuming our tunnels are efficient, they're giving the, the soil temperatures we want. It's also not like a really dreary day as it is right now. Maybe the, the sun would actually come out. Um, if that all happens, again, we'll see fruit by April 15th. And then from that point, it's really only... 70 to 120 days uh, before they're actually ripe. So it depends on the variety, but the average is about 90. It also depends on where you live. But overall, if you can maximize the soil temperatures, no matter where you live, that number is going to be cut down quite drastically. So 
if you're in the Pacific Northwest and something might take 120 days, if you give them enough heat throughout the growing season, you plant them a bit higher above grade, you know, these tunnels aren't gonna be up forever, but if you give them enough sunlight, you give them the right location, that 120 days could very easily turn into 90. Here, the average is 90. So that's three months. So from April 15th, tax day, uh, hopefully not this year, if we go from April 15th, three months forward, that puts us at July 15th. That is when we will get our first ripe figs. And that is basically through years of experience now, I can't guarantee this. I haven't experienced it yet, but I can tell you from past prior, really just math and data, that that's how long they take to wake up. That's how long they take to fruit, to form fruits. And that's how long they take to actually uh, ripen the fruits, right? We only need about 550 growing degree days if you wanna be really, I guess, a stickler about this. 550 growing degree days after they wake up for you to see ripe, or to see, for you to see visible figs on the tree. And then fi you know, after you get those 550 growing degree days, it's really only about 70 to 90 to 120 days. Now, I think that's pretty conservative is actually July 15th. We're a little bit behind this year. So far, they haven't woken up. Today is uh, March 17th. So I imagine they're gonna start waking up soon, at least I hope. If we're at the seventh and we fast forward two weeks, you know, that's, that's still a while away. So I have some time here, even when this video comes out, I still have some time before they're gonna wake up. But regardless, we could actually still meet that July 15th date because as I said, 90 days is the average, not 70. But I do have some varieties that ripen at 70 days. So a variety like Ronde Bordeaux, Malta Black, Improved Celeste. Uh, there's a number of these varieties I have in my spreadsheet, but those will ripen within 70 days after fruit formation. So if it's 70 days, versus 90 days, that's a whole 20 day, almost a three week difference. Um, in some cases it is over a three week difference. Um, that potentially means I could be seeing fruit by July 1st. So this is all very, I think actually conservative and uh, we won't know until it all happens. You know what? If you're not convinced at this point, that's okay. We'll show you guys this season. Um, when I actually get my ripe fruits. Now, that's the big benefit of this method here. And that's, again, really what I wanted to touch on is exactly why you would do this. Um, getting these trees off to a head start and actually being able to feasibly do this. As I said, the fig is one of those very fruit, few fruiting plants that you could actually set up in a low tunnel system like this. And uh, I hope that you guys along this season of 2021 will stay with me here, stay along with the progress of these low tunnels as we really, I think, will change the game of growing figs for not just myself, but for a lot of people. If you can't afford a big greenhouse, a big low tunnel, I'm sorry, a big high tunnel, I think, in my honest opinion, this is the next best option. So I think, uh, I hope a lot of people will start doing this. I know a lot of people already have started doing this. And I want to caution you guys about one thing is that I've planted my trees in a very dense manner. And uh, because it's so dense, um, it's very difficult to manage. And if you're not really on top of this, it could be really quite a challenge and not something I recommend. As you can see, there's a fig tree right there two feet next to it is another fig tree and then two feet next to that is another fig tree this tunnel is six feet wide i have them spaced there's actually 30 trees in just this one tunnel i have them spaced two feet apart on center and that is just extremely close if you are not skilled honestly it's a skill to really get those trees to fruit uh reasonably at that at that uh that distance However, what you could do is something like this. These are my grapevines here 
in the back part of the yard here. And you can see they're grown as a cordon. Um, it's very simply, you have a trunk, it comes up to a point, we make our cut after we tie it to this wire, and then from this point, it then starts to branch out. And you tie the branches then, after the length of that season, down to this wire, and then over time, they form these spurs. You keep coming back to these spurs, you keep cutting them back. The spurs get a little bit longer every year, depending on how much you make your cuts, but um, the fig is kind of very similar to the grapevine in that the grape will also form on that new growth. Those grape clusters form on that new growth. Same thing with the fig. The only difference here is that I wouldn't put this cordon as high. I would put it quite low, maybe six to 12 inches off the ground. So we don't need a trunk that's this high. When it gets to about six to 12 inches, make your cut and form your arms, put in that wire system and train them along the ground. And that way you have something that's really quite productive and easier to manage in these low tunnel systems than my particular system here of having them very dense. And I don't know if, you know, one method as an example is better than the other just yet. We're trying to figure that out. But what I can certainly tell you is that growing them as a cordon or a Japanese espalier a is a lot easier. So I wish you guys the best of luck this season. I hope everybody got through this winter all right. We're getting through this pandemic now. And um, I hope to see you guys in future videos, all right? Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.